G'day. So I've just returned from the Las Vegas Open, and in this vlog style video, I want to give you a bit of a sneak peek into the competitive Age of Sigmar scene and the world's largest Age of Sigmar tournament. Some of you watching either haven't attended a tournament yet, or you've never experienced a super major tournament like the LVO, Adepticon, CanCon, or Bobo, just to name a few. Now, there are plenty of 50 player, 100 player, or even 200 player tournaments that are taking place all over the world. So I'm hoping this video gives you a bit of confidence to take that next step to a tournament. And if you're already a tournament player, I hope you enjoy seeing my experiences from the LVO and potentially reliving some of your own. So my tournament journey started on Wednesday morning with a short 15 hour flight from Sydney to Los Angeles. I decided to stay the night and see some of LA before heading into Vegas. For anyone wondering how I traveled with my army, I used the A-Case magnetic carry case, which fit my three Mega Gargans and my three Man Crushers, which was carry-on luggage on the plane. There was no issues at airport security, it fit comfortably in the overhead and there was no damage to the models. If you're gonna fly with your army, I would suggest looking at the overhead size of your airline's website so you can see the sizes and there's no surprises for your carry case. So I left Australia at 8 o'clock in the morning on Wednesday and I arrived back in time on Wednesday 6 a.m. Time zones are pretty funny like that. The SoCal crew rolled out the red carpets when I landed at LAX. I got picked up at the airport by Matt the Nuge and we did some sightseeing like going to Newport for the view. We had some donuts and then we went to visit one of the local master chefs, Gabe, for an incredible homemade Mexican feast along with some of the regular crew, Matt, Brendan and Evan. I was pretty tired after a long flight, so the night ended with a practice game back at Matt's as well as an invitation to join the SoCal United crew after Tough Crowd issued a challenge to all the other gaming clubs heading into the LVO. Thursday morning started at 6 o'clock where SoCal Hero and LVO assistant tournament organizer Tom kicked me up for a four hour drive to Las Vegas with a cheeky pancake stop at IHOP and a bit of a detour to check out the Hoover Dam. After registering, collecting my event swag and having some dinner, we headed to a Games Workshop preview. Now you might have seen these on Twitch for selected major conventions. Again, Adepticon, LVO, uh, there's Gen Con, there's a heap of these types of previews that happen throughout the year. The Games Workshop actually put it on live. They show it to us before they reveal it on Twitch. And it was here that we saw the Seraphon reveals. We saw some sweet, I think it was Warcry and Underworlds type things. And then after that kind of reveal, there was a small after party with a select group of Age of Sigma and 40k tournament organizers and creators. It was here that Ninjon and I traded dog photos, chatted to GW events team to hear more about the future plans of competitive Age of Sigma in the upcoming years, as well as talking to some of the Warhammer creators through Age of Sigma and 40k like Jack, Bear and James from Rerolling Ones, uh, Paul Murphy, the Glacial Geek, uh, Nick Nanavati from Art of War. There was a heap of people at the party. It was cool to chat with people before the event, but it was kind of late and I had a tournament on the Friday morning. The grand tournament started on Friday with 320 odd Age of Sigma players, as well as 2000 players across the other game systems. I won't go into too much detail on all of the games because that might be a different video, but game one, I played Presence of Idols against Daniel's Slaves to Darkness that I won 31 to eight. Game two was Prize of Galay against James's Slaves to Darkness that I lost 27 to 12. Then finally, game three was Silk Steel Nest against Anthony Seraphon that I won 32 to 11. Now you might have seen me jumping on the GW Twitch stream a few times, which was a lot of fun, but I was very well underprepared to give any actual insight on the stream battles because you jump up, you have no context and you just make it up as you go. Between all of this, there are the random conversations with the community and I found everyone incredibly friendly. I appreciated everyone who popped over to say hello, who said nice things about the channel and share their story. It was actually really humbling to hear how many people had used the videos on my channel as either tournament preparation or even used it in their hobby journey. My day one finished with two wins and one loss. And then after some dinner, we would kick on with drinks and karaoke. 
Unfortunately, my voice was shot after all the talking at the convention, so I didn't step up and belt out a song at karaoke, which is a shame because I do have a couple of songs up my sleeve. You'll have to save it for the next one. Saturday was the second day of the Grand Tournament and the people who finished in the top eight of the tournament would go on to day three, which would be a knockout final. Before game four kicked off, we had the best painted army set up for display. Uh, we could all check it out, take photos, uh, see all the wonderful hobby, as well as two thin coats Duncan was up there judging to see who was the best painted armies at the LBO. There were some incredible armies and I would have hated to be the judge of this. My game four was Realmstone Cash with Jeremy Stormcast Eternals that I won 26 to four. Game five was the Nidus Path against Robert Stormcast Eternals that I won 27 to 12. At the end of the regular tournament, there was nine players trying to get into an eight spot. So a shadow round had to take place for eighth and ninth to see who would progress into the final. I believe it was a draw or they couldn't cut it exactly. So that all got worked out. And after all the Warhammer was done, my night progressed eventually to a video game bar where the bartenders were cosplaying in video game characters. Like one was like Misty from Pokemon, for example, and there was an X-Man and things like that. And the $5 entry fee got you unlimited play on all the various arcade machines. Like there was uh, NBA Jam, there was Guitar Hero, there was a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle uh, side scroller. There was Primal Rage, Gauntlet, X-Men, uh, WWF Attitude, for example. I may have had too much fun reliving some of my favorite childhood arcade machines and I may have gone to bed at like four in the morning but it was an absolute awesome night. Sunday saw the top eight players battle it out for the LVO championship in a knockout final. I took the opportunity for a more of a casual day to check out the vendor booths and pick up a heap of paints from Monument Hobbies with the latest Vince Ventrella and Ninjon signature series as well as a heap of Duncan's two thin coats range. The convention also had a secondhand miniature store where you could pick up bargains like pre-loved, pre-built, pre-painted even, Warhammer. Uh, I grabbed a couple of deals like a Night Vexilor and as well as some Gloom Spike Gits. The secret to these buy and sells is to get in early. So they were open on Thursday. So if I wasn't playing the tournament or my game finished early, I could go in and probably get some better bargains. But I left it a little bit late, but I wasn't really in a rush to find some more models. There was also a Games Workshop booth selling a heap of event exclusive products that you can't normally buy at the regular Warhammer store. So I picked up this original Slaves to Darkness book from the early days of Fantasy Battles, as well as some Stormcast products like a Stormcast metal bottle opener, shot glass, just to name a few random things that I picked up. At the same time as the top eight finals taking place, there was also an AOS doubles event that looked like everyone was having a lot of fun. I didn't participate in the doubles because I wanted to watch the AOS finals and there was a large audience that was easily 50% tough crowd. We were all chatting about the games, we were making predictions, we were generally getting loud, we were talking about season 2, had some great chats with Big Phil and Rich for example, talking about what we think season 2 might look like. It was just absolute great energy and some of the most fun even though we actually weren't even playing Sigma. One of the things that makes the Las Vegas Open special is it's also the finish of the ITC season. That is a competitive ranking season that is used across the world, uh, majority in America, but certainly uh, across the world. So I not only got to experience the awards ceremony for the LVO tournament itself, but also the awards that wrap up the uh, 2022. So like best club, best players, best in faction. There's a whole range of awards. So it was actually a double award ceremony. And the level of excitement and the enthusiasm for the all the awards kind of blew me away with winners being chanted across like top performers, hobby awards. And I'm, just, I'm not just talking about clapping and things like that. There was legitimate chance for everyone and it was a lot of fun. Though I must say when we migrated to the ITC awards and that was being held by Frontline Gaming and we had 40K and Sigma all on like the same area, AOS really blew the house away with the energy and the banter and the laughs. I don't really know what 40k thinks at this point, but AOS have, was having incredible fun and I'm glad that I was on our side of the fence. When it was all said and done, Noah Singh uh, was the winner of LVO and it was an absolute nail-biter of a game.
So the main reason I wanted to make this video was to showcase what it's like to attend a major tournament. Large events like the LVO are a melting pot for the Age of Sigmar community. They act as a major goal and a milestone for players and creates real motivation to paint your army, to grind and practice playing the game, to put yourself in the best position for that tournament. Everyone was in good spirits and they wanted to talk Warhammer and that's that's something that's really unique, right? There is 300 odd players and majority of them are strangers, but we all have one thing at least in common and that is our love and our interest for the Warhammer and the Age of Sigmar hobby. And while people did want to win and do as good as they can, equally they were taking their days out of their regular life to have fun. So I hope if you've never been to a tournament, you see that they're not a scary place where your opponent just wants to make you cry. I love playing in these types of events because you're likely to play against people that you've never played against and you'll play them in different list constructions, maybe some builds that aren't familiar or common in your local scene. You'll get to see games clubs like the SoCal United, Harambe's Heroes, Austin Weird Knobs, and Tough Crowd, just to name a few, who really bring that energy and that banter to the tournament, and it's a lot of fun. And I also received a heap of swag from the community, dice and stickers and accessories and really some sweet things. It was great to see the amount of women gamers in the hall both playing in Age of Sigma singles and the doubles and just hanging around, and I want that to continue. I really do hope this vlog has got you interested and excited to either join the competitive scene or to sign up right now for your next tournament, whether it's being run by an independent community member or a Games Workshop run event like the GW Open series or something that happens at Warhammer World. Who knows, I might see you at the next tournament. I'm definitely interested in going back to the LVO. And if you're struggling to find events near you, pop into my Discord. The link is below in the video description, and I'm sure we can find someone local to point you in the right direction. It was an absolute ball. I hope you enjoyed my little video, and uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging around until the end. I hope you enjoyed that video and you walked away with a few new ideas. Now, if you did, I would love it if you pressed like on the video, as well as left me a comment with your thoughts. The conversation will continue over on Discord and the link is down below in the episode description. I also want to give a massive shout out to the AOS Coach patrons and YouTube members who are supporting the channel and the growth that you're seeing here. So cheers, you are all bloody legends. And until next time, don't roll a double one on a spell cast.